In part one, we showed you how to remove the wedge and, and break the Colt down into its three main component groups. And then we showed you how to disassemble a barrel assembly, pull off the nipples, and clean the uh, barrel assembly and clean the cylinder assembly. Now we're going to show you how to take the frame and the lock work apart and clean that and reassemble the gun. All right, now it's time to disassemble the action. Now, ordinarily, I would not take this completely apart to clean it. Uh, maybe every three or four times if it's really, uh, really dirty, but very little fouling gets in the action on these guns. You'd, you'd be surprised, but it's good to take them apart periodically. And we'll do that now because sometimes caps can get in there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this screw in the base of the back strap where it connects the trigger guard. And having done that, there are two screws that hold the back strap to the frame itself. And I'm going to remove those completely. So off we go. Now this, this screwdriver is magnetic. That's why they call them magnet tips. And that's good and bad. The good thing is it'll hold on to the screws. And the bad thing is it'll hold on to the screws because sometimes you really don't want to be picking up the loose screws. So, now what I do, I'll get that out. What I do is I try to keep everything together. So I'll give this a spritz with ballast all and wipe it down later. It really doesn't need much of anything, but I'm gonna put the screws back in here and that way we'll know what screws go with what later on. You know, one of the issues with Colts is they use a lot of different size screws. Uh, now this is a 180-3 head and that's what we've been using and that works on most of the screws very well in a Colt. But right now we want to loosen up the mainspring. And in order to do that, we're going to need a 340-4 head to fit inside this much bigger screw slot. And we want to want to get that loose. And we're going to see if we can pull this out. We probably can't. See now on some some guns this will slide right out from underneath the hammer. On others the mainspring is long enough that it goes into the receiver slot. And that's okay, but by loosening it up we're going to take some of the tension off of here because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the trigger guard. So what I do is I'll remove that front screw from the trigger guard. I'll remove that entirely. And then I'll loosen up the back screws a bit at a time. And I'm going to see if I can free that spring. There. Okay, so now I've got that free. Now I've got the tension off of here, so I don't have to worry about the potential for bending the trigger guard, which I certainly don't want to do because brass is soft and it'd be it is fairly easy to spring this thing if you're not careful. So now I'm just going to pull these two screws completely out. And there we go. That's going to reveal the internal mechanism. Once again, I'm keeping the screws with it because I want to make sure I don't mix anything up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out the trigger and bolt spring. So once again I'm changing screwdrivers because this trigger and bolt spring likes a 240-4 to get in and get that out. So we're just going to pull that spring out and that's going to pull straight out. And once again keeping the screw with it because we don't want to lose these things for later. All right, so now you can see the mechanism. We've got the bolt, we've got the trigger, we've got the hammer with the hand attached to it. So the next thing that comes out has got to be the trigger. And this, there is a sequence to these. So once you've got the spring out, trigger comes out next. So I'm, I'm going to go back to my 180-3. And I'm going to take the pin screw for the trigger. And I'm going to remove it. 
Now these screws are coming out nice and easy, and one of the reasons is because if you saw the earlier videos where we modified this gun, we polished everything up. And that makes life just a lot better. So with the trigger out, I'm going to take the bolt out. Now the bolt is generally caught on the cam in there, so you might have to get the screwdriver underneath it like I just did to take that out. And now we're going to take the, uh, the hammer itself out by removing this big hammer screw. going to pull out the hammer and the hand and we'll just put that screw back in and we're left now with the bare frame and remember I told you you can get a cap in here well right here we've got a cap there we go cap fragment that'll cause you some unhappiness that out of there thing and that's why it's a good idea to take these things apart now as you can see this is really not too dirty in there I mean just kind of spritzing that with ballast all would have taken care of it now what I do at this point is I'm going to go over all of these parts with a spritz and a ballast all and I'm going to spray in here and all around And then I'm going to drag this aside. I'm just kind of get it out of my way. And I'm going to let that ballast all just work on it for a little while. It's loosening up all the, all the fouling in there. And that's what we want. Off camera, I took a rag and cleaned all the fouling off the action parts. So now they're clean and ready to be reassembled. All right, it's time to put the action back together. And we're going to start with the, uh, the hammer. And the hand, so they're gonna kind of go in together, right? We want to get the hand going into its slot and get the hammer so that it lines up with the screw hole. And then I just get the screw in and we'll screw her in. And we're good, right? So the next thing we've got to do is we have to get the bolt in and the bolt is kind of you kind of got to work the hammer a little bit to get the bolt into its slot there we go and then get it lined up with its screw pin there and once you've done that you can screw it in and you're good to go Okay, so the bolt's got to go in before the trigger goes in. So now we can put the trigger in. And get it kind of, there we go. It's a little difficult to do while reaching around the camera. But I got to kind of line it up on its sear and get the screw holes lined up. And once we've done that, then it's easy. Okay, so there. You feel engaged if I put a little back pressure on it? And it's all good. Alright, so the next step is to put in the trigger and bolt return spring. So that just drops right in and you can see kind of hooks on the long leg that's got to catch a lip on the trigger on that long leg and then this short leg is going to put pressure on the bolt and this is where the magnetic tip plus three hands would come in handy so I'm going to get try to get this lined up and get it started there we go and now I'm going to make sure that my 
trigger leg is on the trigger so I get a good return before I tighten it up. Okay, now, all right, so that's nice and tight. Now, when I cock the hammer, no spring, the bolt goes down, the trigger engages, bolt comes up, everything is good. So the action's back together exactly the way we want it. Make sure that's good and tight. All right, so we are all good. Now we can put the grip assembly on. So the first thing we're gonna put on is the trigger guard. And I'm going to partially put the screws in, so I just want to kind of catch them. Okay, so when I feel the screws catch, I know we're going to be good. But I don't want it tight. Okay, because I want the room to get the hammer spring in place which now I've got. So you can see I could swing that in and now I can torque these down and I can put in the front screw. Okay. Like I said, I try doing this through a viewfinder while reaching reaching around a tripod and you'll Find a whole new source of fun in your life. All right, gonna get that torque down, and now I can get these final torque. Catch it, baby. There we go. Final torque. Final torque. Okay, so now I'm good. Now we can retighten our mainspring and fully tension this up. Now. Bolts up, half cock, bolts down, full cock, bolt is up, hammer returns, everything is perfect. All right, just exactly what we want to see. Now we can put our back strap on. And everybody's got their own way of doing this. Here's the way that I do it. I'm going to start off by catching the trigger guard screw. And I don't really like what Pieta's done here, but because they're not really using the right kind of screw for this, but they've cut it for that, so we're going to go with it. All right, I'm not going to put it all the way in. I'm just going to get started. The reason for that is this springs a little bit, and I want to make sure that I am catching these two screws up at the top. And if I tighten it all the way up, I probably won't be able to catch those holes. So as you can see, I got that catching and I like that. So now I'm going to get the second one catching. And I'm just going to get it part way. You can see I have not, you can see we got a little gap. I haven't torqued it all the way down. I got a gap down there. Okay, now I'm going to torque down the bottom screw. Bring her all the way in. And then I'll torque down these two. Okay. And make sure the action's working freely, and it is. So we are perfectly happy with that. Now I'm going to take some ballast on. I'm going to lube. The arbor, put it on half cock, replace the cylinder, uh, make sure that's out, and of course it's not. This is when you need three hands, guys. There you go. See, isn't that ballast all good? Slides right off. Okay. Gonna replace the cylinder. And I'm happy with that. And we're good. Alright, now for me the last step 
is I'm just going to spray this gun where you can see it. I'm going to give it a fast spray of pure aerosol ballastol. And I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to let that set for 5-10 minutes. And then I'm going to wipe it off with a rag and then it'll be good to put away. So that's it. Disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of Colt Cap'n Ball revolvers. Go shoot them up and have fun.